right, welcome back to the Construction Mentor Podcast. My name is Ike. I am your host. You can catch me on Instagram, TikTok. You can catch this podcast on Spotify, YouTube. What's the other one? Apple Podcasts. Uh, today, we're going to continue the, the interview format, right? I have a construction influencer, which I think that a lot of young people out there need to understand that want to be influencers. There's no better way to do it than to actually do it in a way that brings value to their community. I have Fitter Bowen here. He is your, your union, right? Uh, local one, yeah, local yeah. 803. Local 803, uh, yeah. A lot of people wouldn't expect there to be a union fitter down in Florida, right? No, Where I yeah. come from up in the Northeast, unions yeah. unions big. So um, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, listen, his content is some of the coolest and the most high quality content <laughs> that there is out there, right? Um, he, his welding is so precise it is such clean and such good content for people to get into what I, where i want to start is what is a pipe fitter because for a lot of people out there they don't understand what a pipe fitter is they think that they think pipe they, they think pipe they think plumbing so are you a plumber and what do you do yeah so uh that's funny a lot of people actually say that you know what what's there between a pipe fitter and a, a plumber and you know the story that I was told, I'm just going to, I mean, this is kind of funny, but uh, so if you got a plumber and a pipe fitter and they're on the same job, right. And then maybe they, maybe they're working, you know, waist deep in, in sewage water, you know, then maybe they're working on some overhead. You start throwing rocks at them. Well, the plumber, he'll, he'll duck down in that sewage water or the pipe fitter. He'll just stay up there and get hit in the face with rocks. Cause we're not going in that. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> the that famous ones, the ones that my father, so, um, my father was a pipe fitter, right? So I, I was just telling, telling, um, telling you before this started that my whole life plan was always to become a fitter. And my yeah. dad was actually disappointed in me when I became a GC, right? Like you look in his face, like the evil G GC, like he went over to the dark side, but he, his, his famous saying was, um, the difference between pipe fitters and plumbers is that we don't chew our fingernails. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of things. And, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a plumber. I mean, my grandfather was a, a union plumber, you know, and that's that's originally how I got into it. Um, but I just I can't do the sewage. I got to, you know, and, you know, people might make fun of me for it. Hey, say whatever you want. I don't like the smell. I don't I don't want to be around it. I like to work on, you know, high pressure piping, chill water piping, gas piping, steel piping. And then that's, you know, essentially welding, you know, and then you get introduced to welding. And that's a whole nother aspect of the game. So um, so. I, I think you hit it dead on, right? Like plumbers are getting paid a lot of money. It's a great way to make money and they're only going to get paid more because a lot of people for the reasons that you just said, don't want to do it. So it's supply and demand, but you guys also make a ton of money too. I mean, I know in most cities you're like top three, four, five trades, especially in the union cities. Yeah. Right. But young people just don't even understand what pipe fitting is or that there's even a need outside of like a plumber does waste, like you said, in domestic right. water. So you just flew in, flew through a high level. Talk about some of those different disciplines that, that you get into. Like what is chill water? Yeah. Sorry. So chill water is your, you know, you, you, you have a big building or, or somewhere that needs a lot of cooling, right? You need to cool the air, air condition. Everybody has air conditioning, especially down here in Florida. And so we had, there's big chillers and the chillers create the chill water. And so the chill water flows through the pipes and it feeds these big air handlers, which is essentially like the air handler in your house, it's just way bigger. And so that sends the chill water to the coils, goes through the coils, then the, the squirrel cage sucks the air across the coil, and now you got cold air, right? So that's chill water, heating water, you know, natural gas, steam, you know, pipe fitting covers all your process piping. You know, every, I don't think people realize how much of the world is, the world's energy is carried through piping systems, right? And it's like without the pipes, the, the energy is not going to be transferred. You know what I mean? So pipe fitters are a huge part of the infrastructure, in my opinion. I really do feel like that's right there with the linemen. You know, it's without the, the power piping, there's no power. You know, there's mm -hmm. no AC, there's no steam and you know you think oh well steam well what are we going to use that for well hospitals are going to use steam you know you know you have steam powerhouses that you can generate power you can create electricity you know so there's so many things that the that the pipe fitting industry you know it works on that 
you don't you don't know unless you're unless you're in it. Nobody teaches you. Like you said, no, no, no young people know a lot about pipe fitting. They know plumbers, you know, because, you know, there's cartoons and all this stuff. You hear about plumbers, plumbers, plumbers. Well, pipe fitter. I mean, even I didn't know about a pipe fitter when I got in. I was like, what's a pipe fitter? You know, and right. like you said, you know, it, the wages can be really good, especially in the union. And um, pipe fitting is a massive industry with tons so, of potential. So you you hit a couple of them. So there's the chill water, which would be your large AC, right? Yeah, um, other things, other things that you that you mentioned that you touched on would be like process pipes. So we're not just talking about air conditioning, which refrigerant pipes would be the same thing. You're talking right. about your some of your gases in a hospital, some of your medical gases, maybe even yeah. a vacuum, right? Yep. Yep. Um, trying to fit in high pressure steam. So yep. there are there are a ton of applications that you yeah. would, that you would be involved in now are you primarily new construction or renovation or service where, where did so i think i know the I, answer but I, yeah so i work for a mechanical contractor right and they they provide me i'm a foreman for a mechanical contractor i've been with them for the past almost nine years and they have a they give me they give me one of their trucks their fleet trucks it's got all the tools on it, the welding machine everything i need to to, to do the job but I've mostly, my specialty is change outs and, you know, retrofitting. So I, I do like the bigger construction jobs, like high rises and stuff like that. Like that stuff is really cool. The problem that I have with those type of jobs is the amount of, how do you put this? The amount of people on that job that want to show you who's boss, right? You got so many people out there that are just, I mean, there's a lot of head button and there's a lot of, a lot of, it's so easy to treat somebody the right way. And on those big jobs, they're, they're just driving, right? They want to get the job done. They're like, do this, do that. And sometimes they forget who they're talking to. And mm -hmm. I, I'm very easy to get along with, but the big jobs is, is hard for me to be on a really big construction site where there's so many safety guys. There's so many, you know, I got to go through all this stuff before I can even do my job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing wrong with that. That's just my personality. So I do a lot of change outs. I do a lot of repairs. I do a lot of service work. You know, I'll change chillers. We'll change boilers. We'll do, we'll run vacuum lines. Like you said, med gas, we'll do ozone mm -hmm. for the water treatment plants, you know, so. So you, you hit on something that I think is important because we preach this all the time about the trades offer so many paths and so many just flexibility, right? Like if you want to be in the big job, you can be in the big job. If you want to be um, maybe in introvert isn't the right word but if you want to be kind of on your own working in small crews not seeing a lot of people and just kind of like doing your own thing like man i just want to show up for work i want to do my job i want to do it well and i want to leave like yep. you can go that you can go that route too like if you don't want to play the politics and you want to make a lot of money right so what, why don't we start i want to start at the money and then i want to go back to the beginning okay. of how you how you came into okay. the industry yeah so uh, you may be getting over the rate so right. I don't expect you to share that, but, yeah. but your rate, your, your, the floor of your rate is public information. So what is a, what is a pipe fitter in, you're in the Orlando area, right? So what yeah, does a pipe so, fitter in the Orlando area make? Man, I tell you what, Orlando, we behind, right? With inflation and everything, we are behind as far as the labor rates, you know, but mm -hmm. yes, you know, the good, great thing about the union is there is a minimum, there's the minimum, there, there's a minimum, right? So the journeyman's mm -hmm. uh, scale for in town on the check is 30 70 an hour and that's after your benefits are taken out of the total package is like 47 dollars an hour and some change right and then they take out of that to after go benefits, your, local, right? your local pension your, your benefits and all that types of stuff so yeah 30 70 for in town um i believe our industrial is 34 and then our davis bacon is 37 which would be the prevailing wage when we work on government mm -hmm. contracts and stuff like that yeah. And then, of course, holiday pay, double time, triple time, stuff like that. You know, but like I said, that's a minimum, you know, so right. all wages are negotiable. But that's the great thing about the union is you turn out as a journeyman. They can't pay you less than that, that minimum, 30, 70 or whatever it is, wherever you are. So you, you can negotiate from there. And I have I get foreman scale. And then on top of that, I got my negotiated wage. So, you know, it's getting up there. Um, but you got to You got to You got to provide, you know, you got to be dependable. So, reliable, you so let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that real quick. So, so 47 total, right? So you're getting almost 20 
$100 an hour to go to your benefits, which is right. great because like, if you look at my story right now, you can see the view that my father has from being a union pipe fitter for 38 yeah. years. And my father, his pension and annuity is worth before he even gets social security is worth like over it's 70 or 80 grand. I think it's, it's somewhere in there. It might be yeah. so, called 75 grand after he gets social security, he's going to be making a hundred grand a year to sit at home. You know, right? and that's, that, that's the amazing thing is, and you know, my grandfather always preaches it to me and uh, he makes more money retired than he did ever working, you know, and, yeah. and that's a great, that's a great feeling to have, you know, and you know, that's he, that's a union. He, that's what he did, you know, and uh, my uncle's a, a union iron worker and you know, that, that the union looks out for your future. And that, that's one of the main things is, you know, that, right. They, they look out for their members, your future and your, your health and all of it, you know? So that's a great, I always promote the union. I always will. That's just me. And like I grew up in a union household. I'd have yeah. a lot of people coming at me from Boston with pitchforks. If I ever said a bad word about the union, I don't have a bad word to say about the union. Yeah. Um, most jobs that I run as a GC nationally, I'm in every market, um, are a union and there's a ton of benefits to it. But so you, you just, they take care of your future. I mean, you got a van, right? You don't pay for the gas to get there probably. No, no. Um, you, you got all the equipment and they gave you the education, right? Yeah. So let's talk about that process. But I just want to acknowledge that your base pay before a negotiated rate is 60 grand a year. That is, that is uh, 18,000. So almost, almost 45% more than the average college graduate to be a union pipe fitter in Florida. Then you go yeah. foreman rate. You get a couple more dollars. Yeah. And let's be honest, the talent pool in Florida is really shallow, yeah. really shallow compared to other people. I, I, I'm not going to say what I think you probably make over the rate, but I'm confident that you make a good amount over that rate. So good yeah. for you. The, the, and I'm confident that anybody, any other A player, I mean, if you look at your, your quality of your, your install and like what you can do on, on your content, I mean, you can tell you're an A, a player, right? I appreciate it, yes. A players in Florida get paid. I mean, I, I know, I know electricians that can't speak English in Florida that get paid a ton of money yeah. and it's because they're a player. Yeah. Right. So walk me through, let's, let's start at the beginning before you go into your, into your okay. apprenticeship. Like what was life like for you as a kid, say, you know, junior high, high school, like who, yeah. who was, who was fitter Bowen then before he was fitting? Yeah. So, yeah. So fitter Bowen before fitter Bowen. I mean, I grew up in Florida. I was born and raised in Orlando, Florida. And, you know, it was always, I played baseball, you know, I, I loved fishing, bass fishing, grew up bass fishing, surfing, skateboarding, you know, Florida lifestyle. And uh, pretty much I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I had no idea. And uh, as I got no closer, college, closer, college right, or anything yeah, wasn't, wasn't calling for you. No, I had no idea. And I, as I got closer and closer to graduating high school, um, I almost didn't even graduate because, you know, they have that, that, that program for high schoolers where you can work, you know, half a day, you can go to school half a day or whatever, and then you can go do your job. Like you can get a job, you know what I mean? You Was that like a Votech? Yeah, something similar to that. Um, yeah. And so it got to the point where I was wanting to work more than go to school because I, I was actually earning something I could use with me in the real world, you know, money. Exactly. You know, so you know, but I got, I got it together. And of course I graduated. And it was funny because my school, it was a big school. Um, uh, it was Timber Creek high school. It's in Orlando. And, uh, when you graduate, they tell you what number you are based off of your GPA, you know? And mm -hmm. I think out of, uh, I think it was like 900 kids that graduated that year. I, I still remember this. I was like 800 and, 70 something and you know you don't want to be that high that's not that's not where you want to be you want to be with the oh, low yeah. you know you want to be at the high the higher but yeah, you're not going for a high guys. score <laughs> yeah exactly you know so but now you know 10 you know years later after you know I, what i joining the trades and everything but anyways i'm sorry let me get back to that the re the, the reason that i i didn't know what i wanted to do right i didn't want to go to college because i didn't like school the only reason i did good in school is because i played baseball and i didn't i, I stopped playing baseball because i was working and uh, my grandfather, he was a union plumber at a local 803. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, hey, you're good with your hands. You know, I've seen you've helped me around the house before with stuff. He's like, why don't you try this? You know, you, you can go in for plumbing. You can go in for HVAC or pipe fitting. And uh, this, you know, you're going to a first year apprentice, I think, at the time was making uh, $13 an hour. And I think mm -hmm. minimum wage at that time in, in 
uh, I think it was 2012, was like 875, right? So I was already going to be making twice as much as what my buddies were making minimum wage around town, you know? So I was like, no brainer. I'm just looking at the money, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I'll mm -hmm. do it, you know what yeah. I mean? So I signed up for it and I put in my application, 18 years old. I knew, I mean, I was good with my hands in the sense where I could help you take something apart and put it back together. But I didn't know what all the lines on the tape measure meant. I didn't know what an eighth was, a five eighths, you know, three. I didn't know any of that. You know, no, you were like 800 something in your class. So yeah. You, you know, you, you know <laughs> I didn't know any of that. I was green as could be. I had never welded. I had never seen welding. I had, you know, I might have glued some PVC fittings together, you know, to make a potato launcher one time with my brother. But it was never anything like I was not I knew nothing. And I always tell people that I was a green as can be. But, you know, I, I got into the apprenticeship when I was 18 years old and, you know, my grandfather kind of led me in that direction. And there were so many times where I wanted to quit because I was just digging holes. You know, I was digging ditches. I was working hard all day in the summer heat and I was doing everything that the journeyman and everybody else didn't want to do. And on top of that, you know, they, they, they're going to mess with you. You know, you look young, you don't know nothing. You're getting into a trade where essentially at the time, there's just, to me, they were grown ass men. You know, I'm 18 years old and I'm working next to 35, 40, 45 year olds that, you know, they're just, to me, they were grown ass men and they, they would mess with me all They would send me looking for stuff that didn't exist. You know what I mean? And, and the list yeah, goes like on. Yeah, like I a wanted, left handed hammer. Yes. I wanted to quit. So, so there's what? There's a, there's a left handed hammer, there's a bucket of steam. Uh, they a board sent stretcher. me to look one time for, <laughs> for butt weld cup. Couplings, okay there's no such thing as a butt weld coupling with we, butt welds we just weld pipe together there's no coupling you know what i mean it's, it's, but you know literally just yeah. <laughs> they i mean there's a there's a video out there i probably shouldn't even say this but there is a video out there of me when i was an apprentice i think it's on the ua facebook page somewhere and i'm not ashamed of it because i was green as can be so i was an apprentice for this welder scott robinson is his name he, i don't know if you'll ever see this but uh really good guy taught me a lot and uh he's welding and he's telling me he flips up his hood. He's like, before I make this tie in, he's like, as soon as I get close, he's like, I'm gonna let you know when I get close to tying in, I need you to start pinching my leads because it's going to help me tie in. He's like, you got to pinch them hard because it's going to cut down the amperage and that's what I need. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's not true. And he's looking at me serious. Like, no, this is, I need you to do this. And then I look at the other two journeymen and they're like, he's serious, man. And, and, you know, and they're dead serious about it. And I don't know anything. So I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll do it. So I'm holding the leads, right? He's coming up on a, about to tie and he's like, all right, start pinching the leads. And I'm like pinching him and he's like harder, harder. And I'm pinching him as hard as I can, you know, and uh, they start all dying laughing. You know, so it's just things like that where you're going to get fucking mosquitoes, man, Florida. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, you, that, that's just part of the trade. When you're green, you don't know nothing. You got, you know, you can't have thin skin, they, you know, because it's just going to it's going to make your day hard. But uh, well, I think, yeah, I think it. it's a good I think it's a good point to bring up. You know, I what I see is a lot of people that struggle when people mess with you like that. It's usually a sign that they like you and that oh, it's yeah, OK. For sure, right. For sure. It's when they don't talk to you or they don't want to take time right. to give you a hard time. Right. That they have a problem with you. And it's kind of the way of the world. And like I grew up in it. Right. Like in Boston, everybody looks like me. Everybody's dad is in a union. You know what I mean? Like I, you understand that culture and how to navigate it. And yeah. when you don't grow up in that culture and you come in, if you're a woman, or if you don't look like a lot of other people, it can be like, uh, why, why are you treating me like that? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, why, who, yeah. why are you talking to me like that? And it's like, it's like, no, this is, this is how it is in the industry. It is and, and it's okay. It right? is you rough. can't, you can't, you can't have thin skin. Like you said. No. Yeah. They, it definitely makes you tough. They definitely want to make sure that you, that you, you know, it builds character. And, you know, as, as bad as it may sound, it, it builds character. And, you know, you learn how to, and I always tell people, you, there's going to be a lot of shit talking, but guess what? You're going to learn how to talk shit. You are. They, they're going to yeah. teach you <laughs> it's a skill. how to talk shit. It really is. And then once you get on the other side of that, you realize, and then you can pick out people. You're like, oh, okay, that I get it now. You know, so yeah. but it's all out of love. You know, they're not trying to, you know, they're not trying to bring you down. They're just messing with you because you're new and it's, it's normal. You know what I mean? But, uh, it's so, so you were, you were a first year apprentice right at 18. Yes. Like right at school. You were fortunate enough that 
just like I, me and I said this morning, you know, like I had somebody to guide me into the industry. Uh, one of the problems that I see is that most young people don't have that guide to have them go into the industry. But what was your pay like through the apprenticeship program for a five year apprenticeship program? What were the levels every year? And did you have a mentor going through that? Was there anybody that like, how key would did you say that was to the process, having a mentor and somebody that had you under their wing? Yeah, so I think that, you know, as far as the pay goes, like I said, I started out at, at $13 an hour. That was the rate for the first year apprentice. And then, you know, each year it went up maybe 2 or $3 um, until you finally got third, fourth, fifth year. You got a raise and then you got your journeyman raise when, when, once you topped out. Um, but you're, as far as like a mentor, I would say, you know, if you can get with a quality journeyman that will take you under their wing, which they should, you know, but not all journeymen are like that. You know, some of them, mm -hmm. they don't even want to deal with apprentices. They just want to go out there and, and do their Not job. everyone's meant to be a mentor. And that's fine. Right. And that's fine. But, um, you know, luckily I, I was around some really jam up guys and I showed, uh, you know, that I was willing to learn and I was willing to do the stuff that they didn't want to do. And they could show me how to do something and I could I could pick it up fairly. Quickly. What, what were some for young people listening? Like, what were some of those things? Like, I, I know dress in a certain way, no hands on the pockets, things like that. Like, what what were some things that you would do to let them know that you were there? You were somebody worth mentoring. Right. So the, the biggest thing I would say is definitely show up on time. Right. If you showing up on time automatically, you know. They're, they're, they, 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 they like you because you're here. You're ready to work, right? And then on top of that, you're not, like you said, you're not standing around with your hands in your pocket. You maybe ask some questions. What are we working on today? Is there anything that I can do to help? You know what I mean? And, you know, once you start asking a few questions, you kind of get your head wrapped around what you guys are trying to accomplish. And by doing that, it allows you to, you know, kind of, what's the word? anticipate you know the next thing that needs to happen so if the welder's down in the hole and he's burning rods well he's going to need another rod maybe he's in a tight spot hand him a rod you know what i mean hand him the grinder hand him the wire your job is to you, you know to you know not make their life easier but in a sense help them to where you know it does make their life easier because the easier you you make it for them the more helpful you are the more value valuable you become to them mm -hmm. right so they're going to teach you more. They're going to take you under their wing and they're going to be like, no, I want Ronnie with me or I want this person with me because, you know, they know what I like. They and they know what I and then they teach you the things they know. And that's how it's supposed to be. You know, your journeyman and your apprentice, your journeyman is supposed to teach you everything that he knows. You know, so the, the biggest thing I can tell people that are getting into this that don't know anything is just show up on time and just be receptive. Right. Listen, pay attention, you know, and that and that doesn't, you know. Some people can take that the wrong way and you ask a bunch of questions and I'm listening. OK, but there's more when you listen. OK, but you got to you got to act on that, too. You know what I mean? And don't forget when you go home and then when you come back to the job the next day, don't forget everything that you, they, that you learned yesterday. Speaking you know of I mean? speaking of uh, when you're told something and forgetting. Yeah. How important is it to write things down? Oh my gosh, so important. That's a, that I kept a, a notepad in my front pocket with, Always. with, with, with a pen. <laughs> Because I would go get something, and then on my way to go get something, I got another journeyman telling me, hey, get this, hey, get that. So then I write it down, and now I can get everybody something, you know what I mean? So it's just little things like that that make you, that make you more efficient, you know? And so as long how as would, you can be... How, how can holding this and having this out affect somebody's perception of you on a job yes, site as a so, young person. Oh man, the phone. I held man. up my phone for those on audio. Yes. The phones, the phones, the phones, the phones are, the phones will get your money, man. And, uh, I've seen it happen to a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at fault there too. You know, when I was 18, I got in it. It's hard enough for me to pay attention to a lot of stuff. You know, let alone, you know, I'll, I'll be talking to some somebody or, you know, girls or whatever. And they're texting me. And I want to talk to them the other day or whatever, especially being young. You know, you got so many things. You're just getting into the world, you know, and that phone has so much information on it. Yeah, man, you don't want to get you don't want to be on your phone all the time. Really, you know, 
maybe use it as a calculator, but don't be having your phone out. Don't be, you know, and it's funny that I say that now, because if you look at my content on my social media, you're like, man, this guy, he must not do anything because yeah, he's filming but... all this stuff at work. And, you know, a lot of people say that, but you know what you're doing though. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's a different, it's, I mean, it's a it, different it, level. You know what I mean? And so it's like Deion yeah, Sanders when Deion Sanders is, you know, dancing on the field or he's acting like prime time. Yeah. He's in the pros, man. He knows <laughs> exactly. he's, he's a pro. It's and when his son did different. that in high school, he's like, he's like, you're in high school, dude. You ain't in the pros. So like exactly. become a pro and then you can, t- and then you can show it off. Right. right. It's completely different. So yeah, the phone, man, definitely keep your phone away. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Okay. And just, you know, walk, walk with some purpose. Okay. You, you don't want to just be there. You know, I used to have a foreman. He said, don't be an oxygen thief, right? Don't be stealing everybody's oxygen. Okay. We we, we need to get some work done. And it's totally true. You know, work ethic is a big thing, but if you're, if you're just, if you're a team player, you're good. Show up on time, be a team player and you, you will learn. The guys will teach you. Um, and that, and I mean, when you say walk with intent, like even show something as simple as always have something in your hands, yes, right? pick yes. something up, throw it away. Yeah. So if, 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 uh, something needs to be swept up, guess what? Yep. You're the guy to, you're the guy to sweep it up unless yep. you have union laborers on the job. Then. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they, they, they'll, they'll take that broom right out your yeah, hand. You know what I, I had mean? a, I had a, I had a, uh, an Irish labor in Boston and I was a super, I wasn't even any union labor. And I was, just, I literally was sweeping up a pile of stuff like this big and yep. he threatened to snap the broom in half and shove it up my yep. ass. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. The so, first time I dealt with that, I was like, I was really surprised. I was because I was still an apprentice, but there was other apprentices that were laborers and there's other right. apprentices that are painters and electricians, you know? And so we may be, we may be, you know, excavating a hole and the operator's digging it and okay, now we're on top of the pipe. Okay. Well mm-hmm. now we, we need to, we need to undermine around the pipe and dig a bell hole. So I grab a shovel and start digging. If there's a, if a union labor there, it's like, no, 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 no. That's my job. You know, and I totally respect that, you know, but. Um, talk to me, talk to me about um, where you can go with this education now. Like what license do you have? What does that allow you to do? And in, in the event that the economy goes in the crapper, how okay will pipe fitters be? So like, like I was saying earlier, you know, I think pipe fitters are a huge part of the infrastructure of the world, you know, and so getting a journeyman's card for whatever trade you may be, but especially pipe fitting the world, like put it this way during COVID, nobody had work. I made more money the year of COVID than any other year of my life. And that's because Everything was shut down so everything could be worked on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we were able to do so many change outs. We were able to do so many things because they weren't being used by the general population. You know, and, and even they even printed us out a little piece of paper that to take with us in our trucks that if we were to get stopped during the lockdown periods that we show this paper that shows, hey, we're part of the infrastructure. We're allowed to be out. You know, so mm. I always tell people. Mm. You know, the pipe fit in trade in the in the worst time that for me, I mean, I'm only 28, but being alive, COVID with the lockdown and everything, that was like the most weirdest experience of my lifetime. And that's the most money I ever made in my life was when nobody was working. You know, we were. We were well, they could, so they could, work done. The government could just shut down building tomorrow. Not one more house, not one more building gets built. But guess what? Yep. There still needs Roof, to rooftop. be energy. There still needs to be power. Okay. It all has the country, the world has to keep running, okay? You might not be able to go to, you know, the coffee shop and get your coffee. You might not be able to go shopping and do this and that. But guess what? There's still people in hospitals that they they need to be taken care of. There's still people in their houses that need to be taken care of. The the power plants that power the the city still needs to run, okay? So without the, the fitters... The welders, you know, all trades, man, that are that that are part of the infrastructure. Without that base, there is no civilization, you know. So, and, hey, as as we go more to these, right, and we're reliant yeah. on all this technology, guess what? They need more than anything. Yeah, they need, data centers need HVAC. Yep. They need, and that, and it's crazy know, that you say that because we do a lot of work for data sites, 
And I never even knew they existed until I went to work at one. Nobody you know, would. These massive warehouses with no windows and a million supercomputers inside that have all this data. And these different companies keep their data there. They store their data. Well, what happens if we're to lose power? Okay, well, we have mm. backup generators. Okay, well, what, what fuels those backup generators? Diesel or whatever the, the fuel may mm. be. Well, what does that run through? It runs through piping. Okay, now what about the exhaust stack? Oh, well, that's piping as well. The drains is piping. So, you know, you think, oh, well, what does a pipe fitter have to do with data? Well, this data center wouldn't even be here if the pipe fitters didn't pipe this place up. Well, so and that's a massive that, that's a massive heat load, right? Like there's yeah. no windows because they don't want any heat gain through the through the exterior walls. And there's exactly. I mean, they don't want anybody to see what they have in the inside, but that heat load is absolutely massive. HVAC is the most critical piece of infrastructure inside of I, I have a I have a quick story about I was uh, replacing some uh, dry coolers on top of a building in Brooklyn and and brooklyn new york and it was on of course like july 21st like the cltd hottest day of the summer right <laughs> yeah. and what i didn't know is that it was all the service for the 911 service for manhattan in new york city oh wow and the temp coolers weren't working and it was 95 degrees in the room and those servers the, ch the chips or whatever inside of them were will start to like rupture or explode <laughs> at like 96 degrees and we're just sitting there just staring at the thermometer. Right. And but like you wouldn't understand or you wouldn't you wouldn't expect that HVAC right. has a massive impact on our technology yeah. infrastructure. Insane. Not not only that, but also safety. Like being here in Florida, we have a lot we have some of the best theme parks in the country, in the world, you know? And so we get a lot of tourists at these theme parks and they they will cram as many people in these theme parks as they possibly can. Well, what happens when, you know, that, that building that all those people in or the ride that, that is not cool enough, right? It starts heating, right? Okay, well, yeah, it's getting warm. Well, now it's becoming a safety problem, right? People are going to start falling out. So it's very, it's so important, it's so critical that we have pipe fitters, that we have HVAC hands because, like you said, you don't think about that aspect of it. But the only reason those places are running or can make any type of money is because we provide the cooling, we provide the power, the energy, you know, everything that it takes to, you know, for these places to be what they are. And, and I mean, I wouldn't know that unless I was a pipe fitter. But now that I am, I mean, I'm like, dude, like I could do this. What I do, I could do it anywhere in the country. I could do it anywhere in the world. The knowledge that I have, because the, the skills that I have are necessary for businesses to run. It's necessary for there to be, you know, hospitals. It's, you know, a lot of people can't even do their jobs if it wasn't for, you know, the blue collar workers, you know, you, the roads you get to everything, you know, so there's. That's a soundbite you know, right there. It goes on <laughs> and on and on and on. So, and so just, you, you, you've very clearly laid out the demand. We talked about how to get yeah. there, right? You find an apprenticeship program. Usually signups are in January, right? Google yep. pipe fitter union, whatever your city, yep. these are the signups are in January. So the next month, highly recommend you go do that. You walk through the apprenticeship program while your friends were collecting all kinds of debt in college, you yep. made 13 and then 15 and then 20 and then $25 yep. an hour up to 30. Yep. And now you're making even over that rate at yep. no debt for that education. Yeah. Right. And now you're in this industry and you're, you're touching all these things, all these hospitals and theme parks and all these places, right. With all this demand, that's never going to go away because the world could yep. shut down tomorrow in every single building. Hey, needs HVAC the service. The world did shut down and we right. kept working. Right. And you kept working. So yeah. I you don't have to give anything up, right? Because I don't know who's going to watch this. But what could you do with your career next? Like a lot of people, a lot of young people, I, I go in and I say, hey, who wants to be an entrepreneur? Right. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Right. What is that so, ability like for you? Like how confident are you that you could take that and start your own business if you so chose? And so now that I'm coming up on the 10 year mark of being in this trade and the experience that I have that I have gained and the knowledge that I have gained, it has made me feel as if all the jobs that I do for the contractors, I can definitely do for myself. I, I mean, I do 90 percent of the, the work. 90 percent of the work is physical. You know, 10% of it is permits and paperwork. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So 
the potential. So basically what I'm getting is that you go through your apprenticeship, you get all this experience. You can definitely work for somebody else and make a great living and retire and everything. But there's a whole nother side of it that you also have access to because you have knowledge that can't be taken away and it's it's tangible, right? You can show somebody what you're capable of doing. And that is the big difference between, you know, somebody who has a college degree that is this piece of paper that shows you, okay, well, I got this degree. Okay, well, when you have a-, a Yeah, what does that do for you? You can wipe right, yourself with it. Right. <laughs> when you have, you know, skills and, and a, a, a trade, I can physically show you what I'm capable of doing. You know what I mean? And so- to me, that, that makes you so much more valuable. And so for me, you know, I, I've been, I'm happy with the company that, that I'm at, but I'm definitely looking at different avenues. I would love to have my own company. I would love to be able to employ other UA members as well. Um, but the, the sky's the limit, man. With the trades, it really is sky's the limit because, like you said, you go through an apprenticeship, debt-free. You've gained all this knowledge, all this work experience. And you can you can start your own business if you want to. You can work for somebody else. It, it's up to you. And that that's the that's the best part about it is having that freedom, you know, not having to rely on, you know, an employer to employ you, which essentially that happens. But you are able to work anywhere that you would like because the skills that you have are necessary for the world to function. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you you have a skill set that will keep you fed, more than fed. Right. It'll uh, give you an upper upper class lifestyle no matter where exactly. you are for the rest of your life. Exactly. So man. listen, that is such a profound, impactful message that young people need to hear. Um we both are dads, so we gotta get back to it. Right. We gotta get yes. back to our we gotta get to our night job and we're already well, I never yeah. keep it to thirty minutes ever. Right. <laughs> so uh, drive it home with where can people find you? I- I'm telling you, you guys have to follow this guy. He makes pipe fit and look sexy. He really <laughs> does. I mean, he's got crystal clear content. Uh, super cool. L- plays with a torch like nobody's business. Um, so precise. Tell people where they can find you. And, yeah. So uh, we'll yeah, you up. guys can find me on Instagram. I mainly just target Instagram. I do have a Facebook page, but uh, it's just Fitter Bowen on Instagram. I do a little bit of TikTok, but mainly Instagram. That's kind of like my forte. Um, but yeah, man, I just, I highly recommend the trades to anybody that is, you know, deciding what they want to do with their life. If you were to ask me trades or college, I would say trades 100%. Uh, I have all of my buddies. If I would have known what I know now, I would have told my buddies to to do what I, to to sign up for the apprenticeship. Because they all have debt that they're still trying to pay off. I make more than all of my buddies that went to college. Um, now, of course, I physically, I do work harder than them. But I have gained skills that are irreplaceable. And it is a very, very important craft. You know, whether it be pipe fitting, welding, an electrician. The trades will always, always be there for you. Like I said, it's it's part of the infrastructure of the world, man. So that's just that's my two cents on that. Definitely Bingo. trade. Hey, I'm in the I'm in the same spot. That's where I'm gonna push my son to go. Listen, man, I appreciate it. You know, you work hard all day, uh, both physically and making content, and yes. and you're crushing it as a dad at home. So um go follow him at Fitter Bowen. And again, you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at the construction mentor uh, and the podcast is also on Apple podcasts and Spotify. So thank you. I appreciate everybody. Love everybody. See you next time.